Hello fellow hams and YouTubers. Well, I finally got on the bandwagon. I finally signed up for Logbook of the World on the ARRL and EQSL. So many hams nowadays are only going through those routes for uh, QSL. And uh, it's a little annoying. I still prefer the good old fashioned QSL cards. They're my favorite, but uh, you know, it's, uh, it's what everybody's doing, so I got into it. Um, FL Digi has logging built into it, and I, I understood that it would integrate with your other logging services, and I decided to investigate that and figure out how to make it work, and it works pretty well. Um, it uh, will automatically update uh, Logbook of the World, any EQSL if you choose, and I'm going to show you how to configure and set that up, and uh, in my case anyway, it also had a nice surprise, which might apply uh, to Windows and Mac users and other logging software. But I'll show you that uh, when we get on the computer. So let's go to the computer and I'll show you how to configure FL Digi for um, updating Logbook of the World, EQSL. And I'll show you how it updates my local log, which is the surprise, automatically. Okay, we're here on my little netbook over at my ham station. And I've got uh, FL Digi running. And uh, we have rig control enabled, which is important if you want to do logging because you'll want it to be able to know the frequency of the stations you worked. Now in FL Digi, there's a lot of information up here. Um, it's automatically going to put in frequency and that's going to um, update as soon as you start a QSO. <coughs> uh, on and off are beginning and ending times in uh, GMT, so your system clock has to be accurate. Now with uh, Linux installations, NTP, Network Time Protocol, is almost always installed. So uh, right from the get-go, you've got network time. On Windows, you'd need to install, or, and on a Mac, you'd probably... Well, no, on the Mac, you can check a box in the date and time settings um, that will uh, synchronize to network time. On Windows, you might have to install a program, although I think Windows 10 now comes with network um, time synchronization automatically. But your time should be accurate. Um... These other bits of information here are all going to be contact information. So in and out are uh, RST, um, and it gives you little hints. You can see that there, RST in popped up. Um, call is obvious, uh, the call sign of the station you're working. And it, when you click on it here, if you're receiving something, um, and the guy's call sign is decoded and you double click on it, it'll throw the call sign up here automatically. Now FL Digi will draw from these fields for some of the automated macros down here too. Op is the name of the, uh, <clears throat> yeah, well, there it says you, tells you the operator's name of the person you're working, QTH, state, province if they're in Canada, grid locator, azimuth is here, uh, I guess if you wanted to put in the compass degree. Um, country, this is a, a field for country, and this is a notes field where you can put in any notes that you want um, to be included in the log entry. So while you're in a QSO, you want to fill these in if you want to do logging in FL Digi. And it will store those in a local log. Um, and you can, there's an icon here for save that will save a log entry at the end of a QSO. Um, and FL Digi will maintain its own logbook. Now I've already got uh, one in here from this morning where I was testing this and I worked a station. And you can see that the, they give you a lot of information in here. So uh, this is the FL Digi logbook. Now, integrating that with services. So if we go to configure and we come down here to QRZ EQSL, here's our different uh, services we can define. Call lookup, um, you got lots of options there. QRZ, ham call, ham QTH, and information for the database. The call lookup kind of works. I've got qrz.com checked and I've got my login information here. So call lookup should work, right? Well, if I click on well, this guy's call sign here. Okay, I clicked on him. It populated the fields up here. If I hit the QRZ, it's going to go out and query him on qrz.com. But it only comes back with partial information, country and, and name. I'd still have to fill in his QTH. It doesn't populate that. So 
apparently that feature is not quite there, but uh, that is kind of useful. That'll, that'll save you some time. All you'd have to type in is the uh, QTH information, RST information. Uh, but what we're interested in is uh, Logbook of the World and EQSL. Now if I go to the Logbook of the World tab, there's some information we have to put in here. You have to tell the program where TQSL is installed. Now TQSL is the software that the ARRL released that does secure transactions to Logbook of the World. It encrypts information. Um, they verify that you are who you say you are, that you're licensed. It's a lengthy process getting signed up for Logbook of the World. But that lengthy process guarantees um, or eliminates um, fakes or uh, pirates or whatever, however you'd want to call it. So that's, that's important. Anyway, uh, as part of that process, they provide software that will encode digitally encrypt and sign and transfer log files to and from logbook of the world. So you have to tell the software where that program is located. Now I'm on Linux uh, and in the director slash user USR slash bin is where all the uh, binary programs are stored uh, is where TQSL was located. And I just went and found that with this browse button. Uh, on Windows it would probably be in uh, C colon slash program files slash tqsl i'm guessing but you'd have to you'd have to locate the file for fl digi so it knows where it's at because fl digi is going to use that awr program awrl program to do the uploads of information as you log contacts uh password is your password on logbook of the world username is obviously your call sign so they don't they don't ask you to fill that in um you'll have to check use password for tqsl access uh, uh, location is the name that you defined for your station location in TQSL. Let's, uh, let's load TQSL. So uh, in TQSL, when you were setting it up, you had to name, uh, name your primary station location. Uh, they have that for uh, people that have multiple stations. Uh, maybe a contester that's going to be contesting, they might be able to define multiple locations within TQSL for uh, uh, logging from different locations. So in TQSL, station location tab, you define your stations, and I've got mine named Home Station. And spelling in case is important, so capital H space there, the capital S, you have to, you have to be precise. So I've put that in here. Um, quiet mode will use TQSL without popping up the window and just send the data. Uh, there's a checkbox that lets you, that you can say automatically send the uh, data to LOTW when it's logged, um, which is the way I've done it. So every time I finish a QSO, it's going to automatically update it to Logbook of the World, which is, is kind of handy. Uh, now, uh, well, let's go back here and look at EQSL's tab. Oh, well, these other buttons here. Let's look at this. You could you could manually do a few things here. You could uh, export uh, the uh, all the logbook records to an external ADIF file if you wanted to use that to import into your local log. And well, the rest of these are self-explanatory. EQSL, same deal. You put in uh, your information. Uh, your, the name you defined for your location, and so on. And then uh, you have an option. Let's see. There we go. You can automatically send when you log it. If you wanted to send a QSL for every single contact, I did not check that. Um, I do it manually when I want to do a QSL. But you could, do, you could check that, and it would just automatically send an EQSL for every QSO that you log. Okay, so we've gone through these settings. So once you have all that defined, you'd save it and then close. And now we're ready to work a station and log it. So I'm going to make a contact and go through the logging process and show you how it all works. Now we'll, uh, we'll take a look at my logbook. This is my local logging program, Xlog, which is a, a Linux program. Um, and you can see that the last contact in here was this KV3S uh, from earlier this morning. 
So uh, that's my current log. Now I, I would normally have to manually update this, but we'll, uh, we'll see how this is automatically done as well. That's the surprise. I did not have to tell FL Digi what logging program I was using locally. And I was very surprised to find that it found it for me and automatically updated it with a QSO that I logged. <laughs> so hopefully it does that with your logging software, whatever you're running. Um, if it doesn't, I don't see anywhere in here where you can define that information. So I would guess that it must be something that they've pre-built into the program. So let's see if we can find somebody calling CQ that we can answer. Here we go. Okay, I'll click on his call sign. Populates up there. I hit answer. Hope he can copy me out there in California with my five watts. Yep, we got him. A little weak, but we got him. All right, Norm. Hacienda, oh, California. Short transmission. He's pretty weak. All right, so he he gave me five uh, nine nine. I gave him about a four five. So I've filled in uh, most of his information here. I'm going to put a note in that I was on my. Hey, Zoo. I use the notes field to keep track of which rig I'm on. Oh, his grid square, DM14, okay. Okay, we'll finish up the uh, QSO.
<laughs> May many sunspots shine on your general location. All right. So, when I uh, clicked the SK um, macro, ending the conversation, uh, FL Digi populated the off time here with the uh, end of the uh, conversation. So, it, we've got our log information now. If I hit this save button, save, it will save it to FL Digi's log and it will automatically update it or upload it to uh, Logbook of the World. Now, if I go to uh, my logbook here, my local logbook, Xlog, which is a separate program, if you'll notice, look at that NQ6L with the uh, frequency, mode, all the information. It automatically updated my local log for me. Um, I never had to configure it to find my logging software and Xlog, it might be the most popular or one of the more popular logging programs on Linux. Maybe that's why they integrated it into FL Digi. And hopefully uh, for you Windows guys, you'll discover that it, uh, it finds your logging software as well and updates your logs for you because that's a, that's a really nice feature. Um, my local logs updated. Now if we go to the uh, interwebs, and I go to my uh, logbook of the world. What was his call sign? NQ6L. All right. And we'll go look at my uh, contacts. It's a little slow. There we go. Most recent QSOs. I've noticed that their server sometimes is not very quick. And there it is, NQ6L, with the date and band and information. So, I'll hit details. So, as you can see, FL Digi automatically updated the logbook of the world for me. It updated my local log. So the logging in FL Digi is, uh, is pretty darn nice. Um, and that's really convenient. Uh, I can just work away in here and uh, know that any contact that I hit that save button on is going to be in my log in the uh, LOTW. And as I said, you could configure it to automatically EQSL. Um, I chose not to. I don't want to throw a QSL card at everybody I contact. I'll go do that manually. Um, but you could set it up to do that in here, which is, is kind of nice. I don't know if I can do that. Yeah, okay. I don't think I have an option to just, just go ahead and send that one manually. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe here. All right, so we got him. And, uh, yeah, no button to send it just to EQSL. Ah, that's okay. I'll do that manually. So, anyway, there you go. Uh, logging within FL Digi. I hope you found that useful, and uh, I hope that uh, what I've done here also applies to you Windows guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.